Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about decision trees and random forest with Python. Let's get started. So as I mentioned today we're going to be doing decision trees and random forest. Uh, and this is where we're going to be grabbing our data set from. Okay, it's a uh, pretty prevalent R data set that's used uh, for statistics, particularly when it comes to decision trees. Uh, it's actually from the R part package, but we're going to be using it with um, uh, Python today. So we import pandas as, pandas as pd, import numpy, pi as mp, import uh, seaborn as sns, import matplotlib pi plot as plt, and let's make sure and do uh, matplotlib inline. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the data. So pd.read csv. Here we want to grab the kyphos or kyphosis. Uh, what? Make sure I spelled that right. Kyphosis.csv. Here. Uh, let's take a look at the head here. Uh, oh, and I want to to a comma in here, and I want. index column uh, is going to be the first column. There we go. So that got rid of that unknown column. Um, <clears throat> so first thing that we want to look at then is let's just do a basic exploratory data analysis on here. So we want to look at the EDA of our data. And uh, this is pr uh, actually quite a small data set. So it's not going to be a problem if we do pair plot to take a look. Uh, and we want the hue on the uh, kyphosis. And again, I'm sorry if I'm murdering that, um, but that'll be okay. Um, and again, pair plot sometimes does take a little bit of time. So let's take a look and see. And I, I don't want this. I don't want the KDEs. So uh, diagonal, I want histogram. <coughs> So let's take a look and see what we have here. All right, so there's a little bit of skew when it comes to the age. There's a lot of um, probably, I'm guessing, zero observations in here. Um, everything seems to be pretty stratified. There's definitely skew in the start uh, position. Same thing uh, here with the number as well. Um, but we'll let's let's just look and see, okay, what's what's going on with that. The next thing um, we want to train test split our data. So from sklearn dot model selection import train test split, and I'm hoping that by seeing enough of the videos and kind of going over enough of this, you guys have kind of understand that things are going to st are starting to get a little bit repetitive, but that is okay. So here we want to drop the kyphosis because that's actually what we're going to want to, uh, to predict. And then our Ys, uh, we want the kyphosis. Oh, no. Kyphosis, not Kentucky. Uh, kyphosis. Okay. Uh, now let's do our train test split. And again, I'm going to just use their defaults. So go down here. We grab our train test split. <clears throat> and let's start with our basic decision tree example. So. Decision trees are actually really nice because they're very easy to understand. So I highly suggest using them at least to kind of get an idea of what's going on. And I'm, we're going to use this in the uh, term of classification. We can also use them as regression. It's just the same thing, but instead of like what we're doing here is from sklearn uh, tree import, and I'm going to grab decision tree classifier. You can also grab a tr decision tree regressor. They work very, very well. Um, but actually, again, decision trees are very basic. They're very intuitive. But probably random forests are a little bit better when it comes to prediction. I've had a very good luck 
with using both of them in the past, a decision trees for the explanation and random force for the actual prediction metrics. So <clears throat> let's go on with the classification. So I'm gonna call this a DT for de decision tree. Uh, decision tree classifier, and you know what? I may just do DTC so that uh, I remember that it's a classifier. DTC.fit, we want our X train and our Y train here, and we are going to use the basics. Again, you have, they have quite a bit of leafing and sorting and all of this type of stuff and trimming. Um, we're not going to worry about any of those right now, we're just going to go over the basics. So now let's also make sure we do our prediction and our evaluation. Mm. So predictions here, we'll do uh, dtc.predict, and we want this on our x test. And then we need our uh, classification report and our classification matrix. So from sklearn dot metrics, we want to import our classification report, and we want our confusion matrix as well. And probably later on, I'll probably also show how we can do really nice visualizations with this. I have a couple um, packages like yellow brick that we can use to really dig into like um, the importance of uh, each of the variables, etc. But for right now, let's just do, um, let's keep with the basics. So let's do a classification report, a Y test with our predictions. And we see that this is actually not great. Okay, we're, we're even, even weighted, okay, we're in the 50s and 60s, <clears throat> but it's not terrible. But let's, uh, again, it's, it's really not that great. So let's check the confusion matrix and see what's going on. Uh, now my guess is partially is because it's actually a quite a small uh, sample. Again, because uh, we can see here there's uh, the classification report did 16 and two. Okay, so again, here even, even our misclassifications are larger than our correct classification. Um, and part of this also may be just the way that, way that the split happened. Okay, sometimes uh, we need to do a stratification split and I'll, I'll probably show that in an, 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 at another time. Now let's also take a look. One of, one of the bigger things that we need to do when we're talking about visualization, uh, visualization about trees is actually doing the tree visualizations themselves. Um, and so let me delete this one. Let me grab this one and do tree visualization. So there are a lot of built-in capabilities for that, but uh, I don't think that they're the best. So let's do from ipython.display, import image from sklearn, whoops, image from sklearn dot uh, externals dot six, import here, and we want the string IO. And then uh, from sklearn dot tree import export graph viz. And then we also want import pi dot. And all of these, these are actually uh, some network uh, data visualization type stuff. Okay, so if you're into network theory, that type of stuff, this is also used in that to help uh, plot out graphs. So let's also grab our features. Here, and I'm going to create a list from our uh, data frame columns. Um, and I want one to all because, again, if, if we go back up here, the first we want to, we don't want this one. Okay, we want all the features. So it's age, number, and start. And again, we can also explicitly say that, but I think this is a little bit easier. So let's double check on our features as well. So again, age, number, start. Okay, so let's actually start out by creating a, a dot matrix here. Uh, string IO, and then we want to export our graph viz. So we want our tree data, and we want an output file here is going to be uh, our dot data. 
Uh, and then we want our feature names here is going to be features. Uh, and then we want this to be filled. It's true. Uh, and I need to clean this up a little bit. And we want what? Let's make them rounded. Uh, and then what else do we want to put in here? We need to create the graph. So we use pi dot dot here and we want graph from and we do not want it from an adjacency matrix. We want it from a dot data file. Okay, so again, that's uh, those of you that are comfortable with network theory and those types of things, we usually use an adjacency matrix in order to look at the links between networks. So this is another way that we can do that as well. Um, so we can also do from dot data dot value, um, get value, sorry, get value. And then we need to create the image. So we want image, graph, zero, we want the first graph, and we want to create um, a PNG. And that should, what did I miss? Uh, output file, output data. Did it not? Did it not? Oh, whoops. That's why. All right, let me, let's double check it one more time. What don't you like here? Output file. What, what, what did it change to? Let me cut this real quick. Uh, did they change it to, oh, out file instead of output file. Okay, so out file instead of output file. Out file. Okay, so this this is a little bit big, but okay, so what actually is going on here? What is this output? So it allows us to see kind of the decision process that's been happening with the algorithm. So for example, we have this start and we have if if the start value is less than uh, or equal to 8.5, if that happens to be true, then we're going to move on and then the next value here we're going to use is age for our prediction. Okay, and it's going to follow us all the way down to where we have our prediction outcomes down here. Okay, and we'll we'll all go over more explanation of these um, in a little bit, but I want to kind of go through the whole analysis first. Um, so let's also go through and do random forest now. Uh, so <clears throat> again, uh, one more thing. Okay, so this is this. A lot of times what happens with these um, decision trees that we have, okay, we have, we have the, whole, the whole predictive sequence going on there, but sometimes we need to trim the tree, so we need to make sure, this one's not very long, again, the data set's not very big, so we may need to trim it down a little bit, but what we usually want, okay, is also to make sure that these, this, these examples, okay, so for example, this start method here, and we're, we have these different values. When we're making this choice, okay, these are happen usually happen to be random, how they are generated with the choice values, okay? Um, at least, at least the, for example, start, then to age, then to number, that, that those, uh, not the values themselves are random, but the variables that they're using in that order happen to be random. So sometimes whenever you need to check this, maybe change the random seed, sometimes you can even change the order to see if things are a little bit different, but they usually don't change a whole lot. Um, again, though, we saw that it did not have this great predictive accuracy. Now, when we do the random forest, okay, the random forest is basically like taking many, many, many decision trees and putting them together and then kind of aggregating what their their output is, okay? So it should have, should have a better predictive accuracy. So from sklearn dot and ensemble, because it is an ensemble method. Ensemble means multiple, bringing things together. So we have a random force, and again here uh, we also have a regressor, but we want to use random force classifier today. So I'm gonna say random 
forest classifier and random forest classifier. We're going to instantiate the model. Now we need to say inside here um, how many uh, estimators we want. So I'm going to actually set it to estimators is equal to 100. Okay, and you can changing this number will change the accuracy, but also take uh, will increase the runtime the larger it is. So be wary of uh, when you do that, particularly um, if you if your computer isn't very powerful. So we do X train, Y train, run this, and again we're just going to keep the the same values that we have here. Again, it's going to be do, using bootstrapping methods. Um, again, we didn't do any max samples or anything, and we're not worrying about uh, impurities at all. Um, and we're doing, again, our min samples is one leaf, uh, max sample. Uh, I don't see the max sample in here. Max leaf node is going to be nuts. So it's just going to keep going until it kind of peters out in this instance. Um, and again, I'm not going to set a random state. If we wanted this to be the same every time, actually, you know what, let's, let's actually do that. Set the random... Uh, state uh, equal to, again, I'm just going to do 42, so that it's completely, eh? Why did I want to do that? All right, hold on. Oh, whoops. Oh, it's because, actually, it's not in fit. It's here. It's up here. I want the random state. Random state is 42. Um, in this, I probably should do this also, uh, go up and do this also with the decision tree. This makes it so that um, your results are going to be reproducible every single time. Um, some people have a tendency to fuss around with the uh, random state in order to better their results. I would suggest against that because it's you're kind of p-hacking, um, meaning that you're trying to... Uh, increase your results by random chance, and that's that's not really a good way to go about things. Um, so the next up then is we want to do our predictions. Uh, and let's actually do RFC predictions here. Uh, and so RFC predict, and then here we want our X test, uh, and then we want to print our classification report on our uh, Y test with our RFC uh, predictions. And you know what, let me put this on a different line. Okay, and so we see this is doing quite a bit better. Okay, so now we're in this, uh, the 70s to 80s whenever it comes to our accuracy. So that is definitely a significant improvement off of our original decision tree, which was in the, low, uh, the upper 60, uh, upper 60s per accuracy. Let's also go through and double check on our confusion matrix. And you can see here that again, it's still not great. One, one issue here is that we have some imbalanced classes. Okay, there's a lot, uh, the lot of items going on here, for example, in the absent versus the present. Uh, but Again, that's something that you need to, we would need to probably deal with uh, when we're doing our sampling um, and working through that as well. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this, please comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.